Welcome to High Score, the show that teaches you music theory through video games. Today is, I guess you could say, the first real episode. We'll call last week's comparison to different classical music pieces more of a prologue. Now, before we get started, one disclaimer. I am not a music professional. If you're looking for a highly detailed and expertly explained music course, I recommend the work of Michael New, who can be found at this channel. My show is more about appreciation than technique, per se, but you'll still need some basic knowledge. Now, to keep this show accessible, I have to treat you all like you know absolutely nothing about music. So today is a beginner's course. Let's take a look at our old friend, the Grand Staff. No, 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 not like that. The Music World's Grand Staff. This is quite literally where the music happens. Now, in any piece of music, you will notice this fancy little icon. Why, it's even in our logo. No, it's not a really cool-looking S. It's actually called a treble clef. With the help of the key and the time signature, along with this clef, it'll tell us everything we need to know about the music we're about to read. As most of you probably already know, music has seven notes, A through G. When you reach the next letter, you're back at A again. As a common example, think Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Although, the Do in that song is actually a C, but we'll get to that. Now, knowing the seven notes of music and what the clef we're using, you too can read music. See, the clef indicates how the notes are laid out. In the treble clef, the spaces between the bars in ascending order are F, A, C, and E, or face being a good way to remember that. That means the bars themselves are E, G, B, D, and F. A good mnemonic for that is every good boy does fine. As we progress through the show, we'll go more and more into notes, keys, scales, and so forth, but today we're going to start by focusing on the time signature. Normally this isn't where you'd start, but in video games we have a perfect example of time signature in action. It's in a little game you might have heard of called The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Now before we get onto the coolness of Link's conducting prowess, I have a little bit more to teach you about the kind of notes there are. The most common note you will encounter is a quarter note. Think of it as one beat. Other common notes are the half note, which is worth two quarter notes, or two beats, the whole note, which is worth four quarter notes, two half notes, or four beats, and the eighth note, which is worth one half of a quarter note, or a half beat. Now this isn't even getting into rests or dotted notes, but we'll get into that. Now time signatures work like this. There are two numbers. The first number is the number of notes per measure. Think of measures as like a little chunk of the song. The second number is the value of those notes. For instance, in the most common time signature of 4-4, there are four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four-four time is so common, a lot of times you'll actually just see it replaced with a little C, which stands for common, on musical scores. Keep in mind, this is all math. So a four-four time measure could have four quarter notes, two half notes, a half note and two quarter notes, eight eighth notes, or any combination as long as it all equals up to the equivalent of four quarter notes. Allow me to dispel one myth right away. Time signature does not directly relate to tempo or the speed of the song. It's just used for timing and conducting. Which brings us back to the Wind Waker. In the game, if you recall, you can conduct in 3-4 time, 4-4 time, and 6-8 time. These three are pretty much the most common time signatures you'll ever see, along with 2-2, or cut time. Four four is pretty self-evident, but what about the other two? Well, three four time, commonly called waltz time, has three quarter notes per measure. You know, one, two, Three, one, two, three. Pretty much if you see the word waltz in the title, it's a pretty good indication that it's in 3-4 time. Here's a couple of examples of 3-4 time music in video games. Eight time, to those of you who are mathematically attentive, might seem a touch redundant. After all, if this were mere fractions, we'd go, let's just simplify that to 3-4. 
Well, there's a reason for that. Now, let's recap. We know that in 6-8 time, there are six eighth notes per measure. In 6-8 time, the eighth notes will usually appear in triplets. da 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 And what does that sound like? Well, 6-8 time is commonly called March time. And you hear this one in games a lot, too. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground today, so let's quickly recap. Time signatures tell you the number of notes and what type of notes they are in a given measure. As you'll hear me say often, music is math, and the time signature helps us determine, funnily enough, timing, though not necessarily the tempo. 4-4 time is common time, sometimes represented by a C. 3-4 time is a waltz time. 6-8 time is a march time. But there are other time signatures out there. These are uncommon times. And if you have the bravery, join me next week and we'll be able to tackle some of the strangest time signatures in all of video game music. 